In this section, we're going to learn how to create multiple plots, either multiple geoms on top of the same plot, faceting our data into multiple panels, or putting together multiple separate plots into one compound figure. First, let's look at superimposing plots. Use our pets data set. We'll create our base plot again. So let's visualize um, the scores for each pet again. So on the x-axis we have pet type and on the y-axis we have score. Okay. Now we're going to add in the first geom. Let's visualize these with a violin plot. Okay. And that gives us these distribution shapes. But maybe we also want to know where the mean is on these and standard errors. Um, so we can remember use stat summary and use our geom of um, the point range. Now stat summary by default gives you this mean and standard error. So we can see there's a warning up here, no summary function supply, defaulting to mean standard error. Um, if we want to get rid of that warning, you could specify it directly, fund.data equals mean underscore SE. Now the standard error is really tiny compared to the um, range here, so you can't even actually see it in here. Let's look at the crossbar visualization. And we can see that now we have a line for the mean. Okay, so we can superimpose multiple plots on top of each other. You can see here if we use geom point, if we put that first, we can't see the points because they're underneath. They're layered underneath the geom violin. We could fix that by making the violins more transparent with alpha, or we could put the points on top. Set them second. Now the points here have all lined up along the center. There's many on top of each other. Um, that's not ideal, so we can use a function called geomjitter that will move them around a little bit, spread them out, um, and we can set the height of the jitter to zero so that they're not moved up or down at all from their original position, just left or right a bit. So that gives you visualization of all the data points as well. Um, they're a little bit overwhelming on the graph, so we could make them more transparent. Set their alpha to 0.5 or maybe even 0.25. And let's just see what are all the individual data points? Is the idea of how much data there is? What's its distribution? Is it bimodal or unimodal? Um, and where the means are. Now, there's another way to break up your data if you have multiple ways of looking at it or multiple subsections of your data. Remember, our pets are divided into UK and Netherlands pets, pets by country. So let's create our ggplot object for pets. Um, and let's look at the relationship between age on the x-axis and weight of our pet on the y-axis. And we're going to do this with um, GM point. Oops. And also, we want to see this for um, put a regression line through it. So we use GM smooth method equals LM. So we could set the color to pet to look at our different pet types. How are we going to represent country? We could try something like setting the shape to the different countries. That's actually really, really difficult to view. A better way might be to use facets. So you can add in another function to your ggplot. 
use facet. Facet wrap is a useful one. If you have many categories, it creates a separate facet, a new panel for each of your categories. Type a tilde and then the name of the um, column that holds your categories. And now we get one panel for UK and one panel for Netherlands. If we wanted them on top of each other, we could set the number of rows to two or set the number of columns to one. Okay, so now we've created that faceted grid. We could use facet grid, which is really useful if you have two things that you want to facet by. So we could look at pet versus country. Let's not set n row here. And that will put pet on the y axis, separating them into different rows for each pet, and country on the x axis, or we could swap that around. And you see here that now we're representing what pet type it is by both color and facet position. Now the third way that you can put multiple plots together is by using an add-on package called cowplot. So let's load the cowplot library. Okay, gives us a bit of a note that says it's not changing our default theme anymore. Um, cowplot gives you a few extra themes that you can use with your plots. But what I always use cowplot for um, is the plot grid function. So you can create a grid of separate plots. What you need to do first is set up your separate plots in ggplot. Let's start ggplot pets and let's plot age versus score. And let's use gm point to show the points and gm smooth with method equals lm to show the lines. Okay. Make this a little bit more interesting and set color equal to pet type. There we go. So we have score versus age. What if we want to also visualize um, how weight changes with age? And what if we also want to visualize how score changes with weight? Okay, we've created those three plots. We can assign them to different objects. So let's AS for age and score, AW for age and weight, and WS for weight and score. Run these three, we've assigned them to objects, then we can use the plot grid function from cowplot and just type them in as comma aw comma ws. This will put all of your plots together into a grid. Now this is a two by two grid. It'll default to what it thinks is the best grid for you. What if you want it to do something different? Well, we can Hit tab and look n row. So tell it how many rows you want. Let's give it three rows, one on each row. And that's created our plots, one on each row. We can also give them labels. So make a vector A, B, and C. And that's given us labels for each of our plots.